It takes 40 minutes to bury a body. Longer, if it's still alive. Tougher. When is your best friend? Never trust anything that bleeds for a week and still doesn't die. Thank you, sir. <laughs> well, surprise, eh? What can I say? Uh, well, look, we, uh, we all do the job. Every day, all of us. But sometimes it gets noticed, uh, sometimes it doesn't, right? <laughs> but I did a good job on that particular day, then I... I guess it's thanks to the governor. He taught me what being a good cop is all about. I first met him six months ago. What do you know? That you requested Valentine, they got me. Tiny knows the beat. I'm a good learner. I'm a bad teacher. <laughs> I told them you're too fresh to vice, but uh, they tell me you're good. Cool. Because they, uh, they tell me you're pretty shit hot yourself, so. Egyptian cotton, 1,300 threads per inch. I had to suck sphincter all over Europe to get this. You have to say you like it. You do like it. I like it. You like it, Doug? Yeah. I like it. Look at this. The governor had a reputation for bad police practice and good Italian clothes. I'd seen him tug guys that made 10 grand a night and he looked every inch as sharp. Fully fucking reversible. He worked alone. Always had. He said there was a girl years ago. She worked on his dad's farm. 
He watched her every day from his bedroom window. She never even noticed him. The summer he turned 15, she drowned in a silo of chicken feed. He never even knew her name. I to remember, did they name a place? I mean, did they mention anything arriving? I know, you know when you said to me you remembered? You remember them saying something about where they were gonna meet, remember that? Is your mum here? Yep. I think we know. She doesn't like me very much. Tell me. You want this? It's dodgy. Get away from him. Just seeing if he wants a burger. Well, he doesn't. I do. You don't. He does. You said you were going to leave us alone. I don't know what they're doing. You do. I don't. She does. Are you going to help us? You want me dead? Do you want an ice cream? I've told you everything I know. Chilla. What? A vanilla. He wants some vanilla. Can we have some vanilla ice cream, please, Rachel? The chiller belongs to the Honourable Anthony Bolingbroke. He's the son of Sir Toby Bolingbroke, the Home Office Minister who specialises in deporting immigrants. We'd pull the skinny brat every week for drunk driving, but we couldn't touch him. Not for the real stuff. Trading visas. Hundreds of them. He passes them on to Rachel. And in return, she keeps quiet about Tommy being his bastard son. She sells visas onto Solly Tunkel because Sardine Solly imports beagles, Class B illegal immigrants. Using trucks supplied by Birdie Wing. Until she passed on. Passing on her haulage business to Ernie Stein. The governor calls him Einstein. Einstein can't read, can't write. The governor doesn't like him at all. It's like quicksand. If she'd have struggled in that silo, she'd have gone down even quicker. How'd they find her? Farm and dogs. Sorry, man. She had long, dark hair and never spoke. 
like a Hollywood cave woman. Well, well. Well, Torval and Dean. That's Bob Torval and Mickey Dean. Well, it's a strange fucking world. They're Einstein's men. I thought you were dead. Then mark the fucking spot and call the Pope. What the fuck happened here? Torval and Dean and the cast of Miss Saigon are dead when I get here. Unseen assailant takes me out on the ice. I remember nothing. You see nothing. You hear gunshots. You mean yippee ki with the door? Sounds like bullshit. And bullshit just made you a hero. Of <laughs> every day, of every month, flash past me outside that bloody warehouse. Now, even though, 
Even though the governor was his ass. <laughs> he was in here. In my head. Telling me to get my bloody act together and get in there. Now, we all know the governor. And it's probably best to do what he says, right? <laughs> Congratulations, Doc. Everyone. Courtesy of the Commendations Board, there's 200 pounds behind the bar at the Delphi. <laughs> they gave me the handshake because I got a copper out alive. Maybe I deserved it. The truth. I didn't know it. This much was fact. We had talking corpses. Torval and Dean gave us everything we needed to get a warrant. Today was the day. The governor had waited years for this. Till next time, son. Read that. This is your fact. Top floor now. Sir? What's that? Who are you? These remains came out of the chiller. Your report didn't mention a case of spontaneous human combustion. Get it? I know you are. You're from Ripley's Believe It or Not squad, right? I'm here to put Mr. Stein back on the streets. This is Mr. Stein's lawyer, Mr. Lardison Dahl. Mr. Lardy Dahl, who? Lardson Dahl. We all want a written apology for the inconvenience. Well, look, we'll send you a, uh, a bottle of uh, flip cut, right? It's Clicquot. It's a silent tea. So, the apology? Did you hear me? I'm sorry, you see, you see that, that was a, a silent, fuck you, wanker. The governor never said a word. Where are you going, governor?
It's 20, okay? Okay, let the dog see the rabbit. Steady. Mate, you haven't even started yet. You right, Never better. <laughs> hey, take easy with them, okay? I'm no good with children. Jesus. Is that necessary? Hey, hey, son, sorry about it. You're right. Tuggle said to do it, Mr. John. How do you smell you it? <laughs> Smells like victory. Well, what's that? Say that again, Slavik. Dig the lady hole! I'm gonna hurt! <laughs> Where'd you find him? Sat in the road by the old abattoir. You take a look? Yeah, of course. Hey. Something happened to him up there. What's your dog called, John? Scooby-Doo. Why didn't you go and investigate? Thank you. Oh, shit. Fuck. Fuck that. What are you doing here? Staying one step ahead of you. Stein's arm out, love. Stein's just one fly buzzing around the dog sheets. Well, it's our job, special agent, to catch the flies. And it's my job to get the dog that laid the turd. Nice. You want to get something to eat? What do you want with your kebab? Nothing. Anything on that? What do you want, Miss Stein? Hot chili sauce. He's playing information. On who? Just under the kebab, lad. I'll have a foot, please. On the tin pussy tray. They export girls from Kurdistan to Amsterdam. The ships pass right through these docks. Now I get it. So he gives you a bio and you give him full immunity, right? No. Not full immunity. Great. You know, because, uh, because you know I've, uh, I've got a file this thick on his unreturned library books. Look, I know this goes against everything you think is right. And what I said about the flies and the shit and the dog. You know, uh, I've got a dog. It, it, it'd love that, you know, Wait, if, when you're done with it. It's got hot chilli sauce on it. You know, you don't know my dog. 
You want to see him? It's a big dog. I don't want to see your dog. I want to see your dog. Einstein's lawyer was dead. Albany got word that it looked like an animal attack. Maybe a big dog. Like my dog. But Digger disagreed. Not a dog. Definitely not. So you know nothing about this? Apparently not. I've pulled corpses from this cottage before, but this is one hell of a love bite. She'd like to put us in the frame, right? Disillusioned coppers out for their own brand of justice. Yeah, well, we do have, we do have motive. An opportunity. But we don't have the muzzle for, you know, a six-foot weasel, so she's struggling, you know what I mean? What do you think? I don't think we did it. Ooh. About the coat. Uh, it's, it's very, very black. For you, Gaffer. Super put us on a downtown Uber, watching teenage thugs with aspirations to pimp. We had to eat time until Special Agent Albany thought it was safe to have us back on the streets. As ever, he never said a word. Special Agent. What are you doing here? Staying one step behind you. Wherever you go. You want to help? Yeah. I listened to her questions. Lada Sundar was dead and nothing added up. That didn't make her happy. She was intelligent, driven. Curious, middle class, socially adept, ambitious, and pretty. If she'd just drop the act that she pisses standing up. I'd met a hundred women just like her, all destined for glittering careers and shitty lives. And then we get to her life story. How she gave up so much to get this job. She wants to make a difference. Prove a point. I'm gonna do the job, right, because of the stress. I can see that you get off on it. I mean, I'd, I'd imagine that, you know, maybe that, you know, nothing else got you off. No. I get off on sex. Really? <laughs> I come at the drop of a hat. Isn't everything. Where are the residency papers for the Turks? 
They would be there if you'd supplied me with the right information. They are, in fact, from Kurdistan. This life isn't for you. You used to be the little piggy that liked roast beef. And you ran all the way home. Where's the boy? How's the boy? When you're faking interest, you're supposed to ask, how's the boy? Hang on. Wait. I'm, I'm sorry, OK? Forget it. How is it all? The papers are here. Die Dokumente müssen sofort abgeschickt werden. Herr Stein möchte sehen, was wir haben. Ist die Salis vorbereitet? Gut. Bleiben Sie hier? Ich komme mit Ihnen. Siehst du? So wird das gemacht. <lacht> Last night. Whoa, whoa. What's that? Last night, Anthony Bolingbroke was killed. Bolingbroke? Bolingbroke. He was last in this station when DCI Shade pulled him in for questioning on his suspected business dealings with Stein. Well, you know where I was. And DCI Shade? With me. I left yours as you know about, about nine. I got to the other just before ten. Time of death it was between six and eight. She still got you pussy ripped on that elbow then. Yeah. How's the governor taking it? Misses the action. See you right. Sweetheart, I promise you. Mommy, you know that thing I can hear? Yes. 
I can see it now. Jesus. You're right, Gav. You look like shit. I'll live. Sure. <sighs> You're spoiling my business. I'm trying to run a fucking business, and you are spoiling it! Take the gun away from his mouth. It could be dirty. I'm a little edgy, because I need a little something. And I don't have none. Cause I don't have no money. Cause you fuckers gave my customers the willies. Just doing as we're told, Lenny. Doesn't give us any pleasure. <laughs> Lenny? He's not well. I need to get him out of here, okay? Okay. I am so great. Look the fuck at me! I can't hold a cup of tea, man. I'm sweating like a fussy! Lenny. You had a choice right now. Between you and Dark here, between who lives and who dies, what would you do? I'll kill him. You motherfucking piece of shit! If you had the ability right now to take out this worthless piece of scum that puts 12-year-old girls on the streets to pay for his habit, would you do it, John? Would you? Yeah. He 
He couldn't explain it. All he knew was that they began the night in the chiller. He remembers the taste of the girl's blood in his mouth. His hand bled. But he had no pulse, no heartbeat. Then this transformation. But he'd learned to control it. He just needed a regular fix. He said maybe it changed him on the outside, but on the inside he was just the same. Still the man I knew and respected. The man who cared about one thing only. Getting the bad guys. Now he could do it by his own rules. The boys are a special union. We're looking for a beast with more teeth than a barracuda. We were still partners, still taking down the bad guys. Nothing, nothing had changed. Except you're dead. I'm a better copper for it. It's not what a man knows. It's what he does with that information. Does the good man act upon it? Does the smart man stay silent? If the good guys win and the bad guys fall, who wouldn't call that justice? The other night. Look, Lenny's a pimp. There's no connection to Stein. The other night. It was pretty good. Yeah, it was. I could have told you that over the phone, but I fancied the walk. Oh, shit. Okay, now come in. I'm going to. Uh, I'll go get, get some clothes, all right? Or I could get these off. Someone could have trained an animal. Someone with a grudge against Stein. And a bite. Isn't from any kind of domestic animal. And there's the blood. Where does it go? Same with the pimp guy. He's not associated with Stein. As far as we know. But he's an addict. Whoa, so whoa, whoa, whoa. Have you been asked to investigate it? No, but it's my job to keep Stein safe. And you are. You are, Bianchi, but you're not a part of the investigation into these attacks. No, but they will send someone. If they think it's you and your boss, they'll send internal affairs. Doc. We got Tommy here. He says he was there when Bolingbrook got it. The governor's on his way. The kid won't talk to anybody but you guys. Okay, cool. Well, you uh, you keep him there, huh? and Red, keep him out of trouble. Huh? You're full of ideas. You won't get in the manual, John. What? Nothing. Nothing. I have to go. Are you coming back? Don't know. I do hope so, because men like you are so rare. What did he see? He was in a cupboard. He didn't see who he was. But Einstein doesn't believe that. Einstein wants to know who's after him. He thought Rachel might have been talking, so he sent the nasty Mr. Tunkel to visit them. Did somebody hurt you, Tony? 
No. Did anybody hurt you? He got that running away, but he hurt your mum, didn't he? Tommy. Where is she, Tommy? I don't know. Where is she, Tony? Ah, oh, gone now. You missed her, haven't you, Tony? She should be more careful who she talks to. Yeah! yeah! I got a niche there! <laughs> Tommy ever see justice. We play by the book, and the bastards go free. We play by our rules. And we take them down. We're still the good guys. Nice one, Tommy. Come on. Yeah, sweet. Sweet, sweet. Come on. They've just found another body down at the docks. The bite marks match with Vladis and Darlin' Bolling broke. Stein's getting jumpy. Oh, really? Well, I hope he's not getting fucking that. I'm putting him into protective custody. Okay, you do that, because I'm putting this poor little kid into a home for motherless children. I'll find you later. Yeah, you do that. Kill my mum. You should die. When a man smells as bad as Einstein, a hiding place is hard to find. Did you get the address? There's plenty of coppers who think like we do. What does it feel like? Freedom. So how often do you need to, you know? Well, what I need is in plentiful supply. There's always bad blood available in this city small price to pay for what we do. Because what we do is good and right and just. Don't ever doubt that. That hole in your head, 
Nothing. It's no pain. You feel anything? Ever? A little cold. I always feel a little cold. Guess that's because you're dead, right? That's a big part of it. You get hungry. No. Strange thing is, I, uh... I still love my cigarettes. First thing I think about when I wake up. Just like before. Fuck. That is strange. There's no point in giving up now. <laughs> Gotta be honest, though, you know, it's... If it was anyone else, that whole monster thing, it would freak the living shit out of me, but, but I knew. <laughs> it looks good. Yeah. That's how you wear it. You fucking knew <laughs> Einstein had left Slowbo to the bait. Killed the wrong guy. In the 40 minutes it took to bury Slowbo, I felt my whole life pass by. Sorry, Detective Inspector. I didn't see the gentleman enter. Is everything all right? Fuck off. Everything's fine. I, uh, like that Prince of Wales check, Clive. Uh, very good, Mr. Shade. Please, it's all good. Why is too small to dance? Slowbo didn't deserve that. What we did, Shade, was wrong. Wrong? <laughs> It's out of control. Only if you let it get that way. I'm crystal. Crystal. So what are you going to do? You're going to spend the rest of your days living off villains? What are you going to do when there are no more bad guys for you? When you need a fix? There will always be bad guys. As judged by you. John! No. For some fucked up reason, I can deal with the fact that you're no longer living. I can even deal with the fact that you're not human. And I can't and won't stand by it if you're no longer a cop. happy about any of it, Doc. Any of what, sir? Well, any of it at all, really. Some wanker from the Snitch Squad comes in here, waving his badge like a third nipple, and I have to take two good officers off the street. But 
There it is. Internal affairs. As they say in Burma, they're making me drink monkey milk. Ooh. I'm putting you on bag and tag duty. Now, just until this blows over. You mean me and the governor, sir? <laughs> I can't put Mort and John Doe duty. He'd slip me from neck to nuts. No, no. I let him have a few days' leave. You can deal with it. Sir. Yes? You know I admire the governor. Always have. But there's something about his recent behavior. It's... Sir, DCI's shade is responsible for these murders. The Lardison, Bolingbroke, Tunko, and others. You have to understand, he, he believes he's doing the right thing. This is not the, the DCI shade that we know, sir. That man is dead. What he's become is... is Look! Simple. In my club bag, Doc. Tell me what you see. See my eyes? Woods? Oh, Jesus. I'm not a golfing man. Sir. Some iron, some woods. They all hit the ball a little differently. Hard and heavy for the gliding long shot. The softest touch for the delicate you can't play a varied course with one club, Dark. Same with the police force. It takes a range of officers. Some hit heavy. Some nudge. Some knock the ball off the motherfucking course. If you're telling me that DCI Shade has on occasion taken events into his own hands to stuff shit back up the devil's anus, I call that hitting heavy when the course demands. Do I make myself Absolutely clear, Detective Sergeant Dark. Must get on. Neither of us wants to be here, Detective Sergeant, but these incidents cannot be ignored. Your own investigation records show that Bolingbroke, Tunkel and Dahl were well known to you and to DCI Shade. Now, DCI Shade has made numerous applications to get search warrants on these gentlemen, all refused as unsubstantiated. And now they are dead. Are you going to ask me a fucking question? Or you what? watch your tone with me! without fear of betraying loyalties. Are you in any way responsible for those deaths? Oh, oh God. I'll, uh, I'll really fix this on my way out. Oh, sorry, sorry, right, sorry. If we can continue. I asked you a question, Detective. Did you? And what was that? If I was responsible for these murders. Really? Why would you think you're responsible? 
because we have motive and opportunity. The body showed complete arterial evacuation in under 30 seconds. What you have, Mr. Mabs, is no idea. I have only reviewed the crime scene reports, forensic data and police statements. I'm hoping you have the results of the room tossing. Um, perhaps we should conduct our interview separately. Ah, his clearance goes first. Detective Sergeant Dark. My name is Dr. Elgin from CUUC. That's Civilian Unexplained... Uh, something, something. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I prefer to call it the Apocrypha Unit. Cool. Prefer yours. Yeah, they say it has too much of a witchy vibe, but, uh, well, they have to work alongside us beardy weirdies. As we have been statistically proven to have a higher degree of success in resolving paranormal incident than, uh, well, official techniques. Plus, they got a grant from the National Lottery. You need sleep. Yes. Yes, we can continue this later. Yeah. Though I, uh, I would just ask one thing. Have you seen the Grail, Detective Sergeant? Have you, have you actually seen it? The what? I, uh, I've seen the aftermath too many times, but never the creature itself. <laughs> I came very close once. Just once, but, uh, that was years ago. This, this thing has a, has a name. The Grail, yes. Yes, the name derives from the Greek or Latin for vessel, because that is how it occupies the human body. But, uh, no, never mind about this. We can, uh, we can talk about this later. Can you, can you remove it? Oh, like a bad tooth. <laughs> no, I'm afraid you cannot, but, oh. Oh, dear, I'm so sorry. Is the vessel the person, somebody close to you. Nothing to report. No activity. Nada. No sign of liaising with Special Agent Albany. Zilch. Please use the correct terminology when addressing me, Detective. Dark, what is he doing? He's leaving the premises with what appears to be a dead body in a bag. Please, sir, be a sport. Do give us another chance. I call to say, I'm almost done here now. Einstein's meeting the Amsterdam Empire tomorrow. That's the guy we want. He's going to walk him right into our trap. Then it's over. So, you'll be glad to see the back of me, right? I mean, this thing between us was never go-
What are you doing? Oh, I thought Tommy and I here could uh, go fly a fucking kite or something. Got myself a skinful last night, so I'm off the source. There'll be no naughty morty. Yeah. Strange, yeah? Back at the station without you. Or asking me how you are. Have you told anybody how I am? No. You know, I've, uh, I've got some time today. Maybe I could take little Tommy somewhere, huh? Maybe go see a movie, huh? I haven't got my coat. Where is it? It's back there. You wanna go get it, huh? The more said you had... Get your fucking coat now, Tommy! You don't trust me, John. So... Can I trust you? Only two this week. When a body gets pulled from the water, they call the cover from bag and tag. Until Internal Affairs said otherwise, that was me. Is this a good time? Ever had a tinkle in the Indus, Mr. Dark? Because it's a very risky business. In the Indus, there's a little fish called the Kandiru, which can swim up a stream of urine. It does this to find its way into your testicles, because the Kandiru is a parasite, and every parasite has its chosen organ of occupation. Belly, bowels, balls. I tell you this in the hope that it will make what follows easier to accept. The Kandiru is from the natural world. Our world. Supernatural means beyond natural, not beyond what exists. Just beyond what we know. It is supernatural only until we witness it. And you have witnessed the Grail, Mr. Dark. Think of a grail as a spectral parasite that needs a very particular kind of host. A human corpse. Vacated by its own life force, this fleshy vessel gives the grail all it needs. It enters after death, burrowing into the heart and reanimating the corpse. Digging itself deeper and deeper. Mutating and corrupting the heart into its own monstrous form. And compelling its host to seek out the blood upon which they must both now live. I once had a fragment of the grail in a specimen jar, taken from the ruptured heart of a Kurdistan goat farmer. But it is lost and gone forever, courtesy of British Airways. Look at this. Look at it. I knew her. I know. But you must... I must what? Destroy the Grail, Mr. Dark. In position on one. 
Copy that, Terry. Leon, you up. In position on two and enjoying the view. Stay sharp. Copy that. I hate the sea. You have no soul. Shit, Leon. Terry? On one? No. You don't talk. You never spoke. It is said that the Aztecs had the best method of destruction. Burial in the salt flats of the Andes. The sailor acid dissolved the grail into oblivion. Choose your spot well, Mr. Dark. Make it one from which it cannot return.
a shot in the head. What do you mean? What do you mean, shot in the fucking head? Sign Queen B. I have a 611 at 240 Toll Street. That's Tango, Oscar, Lima, Lima. We need ARS and all available units with lockboxes. Come on. And get Jane in. Please. Now. Now. And get this one cleaned up. Come on, Mary. Beat now. me. Five percent. <laughs> From here. You couldn't take it from here if it had a wheel at each corner. What are you doing? Well, in the immortal words of Doris Day, okay, sirrah, sirrah. What are you talking about? Whatever will be, will be. All we can do now is wait.
Detective Sergeant, can we talk? We can help her. It is a violation of Code 433, Section 7, to leave a fatal incident with an injured officer. He does not have the authority. No. But he does have the power. I'll be so thin. Oh, oh my God, what's that? I can feel that, Doctor. Doctor! Oh, my God. Oh. 